Our reporter pitches in to help demolish a home in Waveland, Mississippi. And we see University of Nebraska students during their alternative spring break. Ever wonder what would happen if you get sick or hurt while traveling and you need a medical evacuation? We will discuss this and other travel emergencies in this episode. A group of volunteers brings the Christmas spirit to Hurricane Katrina victims in this episode. On Web Tips, we'll check out a site, Forecasting Airfares. We traveled to Camp Hope where many volunteers stay during their time on the Gulf Coast. Now on to our first stop. National Civilian Community Corps, NCCC, is a national program that enrolls over 1,100 18 to 24 year olds each year who perform 1.8 million hours of volunteer service during their eight month residential participation. NCCC members start with an eight-week training session at one of five campuses across the U.S. This prepares participants to meet the national homeland security and disaster response needs. NCCC members then work for six months in the Gulf Coast. Many of the AmeriCorps NCCC volunteers become trainers or group leaders during their eight months of service in the Gulf Coast. AmeriCorps National Civilian Community Corps is an organization that brings 18 to 25 year olds in to do community service projects and we mainly work down in the Gulf Coast region. AmeriCorps Western Region currently has 22 teams down here in the Gulf region and um, Camp Hope is where we house um, a lot of our uh, NCCC members that come in to work for various um, projects like Habitat for Humanity. Uh, just that. We house volunteers for a number of other groups. Some of our partner, partner organizations are the St. Yeah. Art Project, the uh, Hope Worldwide, uh, Hands On, uh, the New Orleans Recovery School District. Uh, we will house volunteers from, from any group as long as we have space. The idea is uh, to provide an inexpensive but comfortable place for people to stay during their volunteer work weeks down here in uh, the Gulf region. I am Timothy Howard. I'm from Kentucky. I am a member of AmeriCorps NCCC. Uh, what kind of brought me about down here was that when I was going through high school and I was going through college, there's a lot of trouble spots in the world. And I always felt like I should do something, but because of high school and because of college and because of those responsibilities, I didn't have the time or I didn't feel like I could dedicate as much of myself to these problem spots as I felt was needed. So after I finished college, I realized that I did not have a family yet, I didn't have any established job, and I had the time in my life to volunteer for one of these organizations. And so I did some research and found AmeriCorps and Triple C. And with their 10 month program, I decided that that would be a good thing for me, you know help out in the United States, which I think it's important to, while well, there are other problem spots in the world, I think it's important to help out at home. So I signed up for the program and trained for a month in California. And then our first project, our first of four projects, uh, they sent us to Camp Hope in St. Bernard's Parish. So now I have learned how to uh, do siding, uh, painting interiors. Hopefully I'll get a chance to learn how to do framing roofing soon. And I worked in the Habitat Warehouse for two weeks, so I also learned how to work a forklift, which is my new favorite tool. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. Everybody's very, very enjoyable work with, very pleasant, very understanding of your situation. And definitely everybody has their own story, whether it has to do with the hurricane and, and the locals or the volunteers who come down here and how they did it. So yeah, uh, really happy I'm down here and looking forward to more time. I was here in March with a music group. I was on tour, and um, I fell in love with New Orleans very unexpectedly. I was um, a senior in college in New York City, and I assumed I would stay in New York City just because that's what most people who I went to school with did, and that's what my plan had been for most of college. Um, and so all of a sudden, here I am, March of senior year, saying, I'm going to move to New Orleans. Um, and I didn't really care what job I was doing here, so I did a very wide-ranging job search. I just looked in a variety of different fields, and to my 
great surprise, ended up working in construction, um, which is not what you usually do with a degree in um, musical anthropology, but that's what I'm doing with it, and I love it. I love every day of it, so it's great fun. Um, Habitat is a really fun organization to work with, and you know, people often say, oh, you know, it's so good of you to give a year of your life and, and to give your time, but in all honesty, you know, it doesn't feel like it's something I'm doing just for other people because it's also definitely for myself as well because the city is incredible and it's a really interesting place to live and to sort of spend my time when I'm young. Um, and the people who I work with are just fantastic and of course the volunteers are great. Everybody who comes down and just donates their time is amazing. Um, and it's a great experience as well to, to be using my brain in a very different way and getting to use my body as well after four years of college. Hi, my name is Mary McVeigh. I'm a member of AmeriCorps NCCC from the Western Region Campus, Sacramento. Um, I've I've been down here for about a month now with my team of uh, 11 core members um, doing some community service in the Camp Hope kitchen. We are cooking for anywhere to 400, between 400 and 700, maybe sometimes even 800 volunteers. It's a different kind of community service. I was down here last year for about six months doing a variety of rebuilding and construction projects. Um, so this is a nice change working with the community members, for the community members, feeding them, um, getting to share with them, interact with them in a, a different way. So there's a lot of different kinds of volunteer work that can be done besides um, rebuilding. So come on down and check it out. I first came down to um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi in May to serve as the administrative assistant for the Gulf Coast office, office which is in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Um, Jules Hampton is the director down here, and I had a wonderful experience, and then I moved on to doing a summer of service program in July, which was held at Xavier University. We brought inner city um, kids from New Orleans, 18 to 14 to 17 year olds, and they um, learned what serving their community was all about, and we had a wonderful time. That was a month long. And I am now back as the Camp Hope support team leader to serve for a month. One of the things that I, I tell our people at orientation each week is that it's important that you're here. It doesn't matter if you lift a finger while you're here. There are people down here who have been had their faith in humanity restored just by the fact that volunteers are coming, that they know that someone cares for them. Uh, there, uh, I spoke with a local resident here who told me that he sat on the roof of his house for five days waiting for someone to come and rescue him and his father and his mother, elderly father and mother. He lost his mother during that five day period and uh, he said he had lost faith in everything. But the people coming here to Camp Hope have restored his faith. So it's important that people show that they care about their fellow Americans, fellow uh, community members in, in the St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana area, uh, and, and give back just by being. To see volunteer stories, go to www.projectkatrinavolunteers.net. Hi, my name is Lucas LaRose. I'm a sophomore political science criminal justice major from the University of Nebraska. Now, uh, what we're doing back here is this is a group from the university. We all range in age and vary. Some of us work for the university. Most of us are students. But they're out here, they're team leaders, and they're very good leaders for all of us. The reason why I wanted to come down here is just because after I saw all the news reports on CNN, NBC News, Fox News, and when you saw Katrina happen to this region, it didn't feel like it's happened to the region, it happened to the whole country as a whole. I mean, it, I felt the pain, even though I have no relatives out here. And coming from the Midwest, we know a little thing or two about, you know, damage and everything. We can clean up. And, and I've seen Midwestern towns clean up after about a week after a tornado. So we know a thing or two. And I think the most was the reason why we're here is just because it's break. Um, yeah, we could sit at home, work, just sit around, but we'd rather be helping people. And that's what this is about. It's about service. It's about trusting each other here. We're here in Waveland, Mississippi, with students from the University of Nebraska who have come here to join Katrina Relief to help homeowners rebuild their lives after Katrina. My name is Katie Moran. I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, this is my fourth time here over the course of the two years. And uh, the reason why I came back is because um, 
it's just addicting, really. And um, it's just people need help. People need help. Uh, it's very frustrating to come back after two years and see that only 20% of the city in Waveland itself has been um, recovered. I know it's very frustrating for people who live here. I can only imagine the battle between the, with money and insurance and the government. Um, I would only hope that if this would happen to me that people would come from all over the country um, to help out. And um, I feel like it's very important that people come down and um, volunteer. To see volunteer stories, go to www.projectkatrinavolunteers.net. Travel is often filled with excitement at a time when we get to experience adventure or relaxation that takes us away from our day-to-day -day lives. It also takes you away from your healthcare providers and the routines and procedures that you wouldn't think about until you were in the midst of a medical crisis. So what would you do if you broke your arm while boarding a plane in Cameroon or tore a ligament while skiing in the Swiss Alps? Each day, vacationers have emergencies that occur out of the blue and medical evacuation is sometimes necessary. Learn about what to do and how to be prepared for this as we talk to industry expert Dan McGinnity. First of all, I would say that um, it's, it's important that you buy some type of travel insurance with a cruise. Cruises typically involve a large uh, investment, a deposit, that if something happens to you be between the time when you book your trip and you actually go on your trip, um, you, you risk the, the uh, uh, chance of losing that significant investment that you have. Uh, having said that, the main difference between the cruise line insurance and that that you buy from a third party provider, whether it's through a travel agent or directly from a company such as Travel Guard, is that uh, a third party plan covers you door to door, ship to shore. It, from the moment you leave to the time you get on your airplane to the time you get back home. Many times the cruise line policy will only cover the, the air portion if, you, if it was booked as part of the pack, uh, package. The other major difference is a third party plan such as a travel guard uh, insurance plan also covers you for financial default. And certainly, you know, th there's great stability in the travel industry today, but several years ago when uh, uh, several of the major cruise lines went out of business, those people that bought their insurance from a company like Travel Guard were covered. Those that bought it directly from a cruise line were not. So th there are differences, and it really depends on what your risk tolerance is and, and what's important to you in terms of uh, protecting your investment. You know, in the United States, about 85% of the travel insurance that's purchased is purchased on a per-trip basis, and, and uh, it, it covers you for, for a specific trip that you're planning to take. The main coverages that you're getting in that package are trip cancellation interruption. If something happens from the time you book your trip until the time you go on your trip, uh, it, re it, it covers your uh, front end investment. And about 80% of our claims are for things that happen before a person even goes on their trip. So your mother gets sick, you get sick, your travel, travel companion gets sick. Um, you go to the airport and you're socked in by fog or, you're, or uh, uh, a snowstorm. You can't make it to your destination. There are a number of, of incidents like that that can prevent you from even going on your trip. So that's trip interruption and, and cancellation. You're also covered for emergency medical expenses that you incur. Many people have this misconception that when they travel anywhere in the world, their health insurance goes with them. And the fact of the matter is, is that uh, People with Medicare, for example, have no coverage outside of the United States. People that are covered by an HMO or a PPO uh, have limited coverage, may, may have additional uh, co-insurance levels and deductibles. Travel insurance is first dollar covered, coverage for any emergency medical that happens outside the country. Medical evacuation, which is certainly not something that's, that's likely to happen, but when it does, it can cost tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And unless you have travel insurance, that is, that, that's an expense that you have to bear. Um, luggage, uh, uh, we cover lost, stolen, or damaged luggage. You know, there was a report just out uh, uh, a couple weeks ago that in 2005, uh, the uh, U.S. Airlines lost more luggage than they have ever lost in, in, in the uh, history since the tracking. And, you know, that's another coverage. If, you're, if your bags are delayed, we cover, we'll reimburse you for expenses uh, to buy um, the sort of essential items that you need, you know, toothbrush, uh, 
pajamas, a change of clothes. So those are all the essential coverages that, that are, are, are in a typical policy. Beyond that, uh, companies like TravelGuard also offer a 24-7 traveler hotline. You lose your passport, your wallet's stolen, you need a medical referral, you've, uh, you need an emergency cash wire transfer. Those services are also built into most of the major travel insurance policies that are sold. So again, it's, it's, it's the peace of mind of knowing that wherever you are uh, in the world, in whatever time of day, you have someone that you can call who's going to really work on your behalf and, and take care of any of these unforeseen uh, incidents that can disrupt your travel. Friends and neighbors come to help in the Gulf Coast. Estimates of volunteers in the first year exceed half a million. The scope of the problem will need twice that number in the next year. Volunteers are the fuel that's going to rebuild the Gulf Coast. It's just devastating. You can't put it into words. You have to come down and experience it and help. Are you planning a trip and want to know when to book your flight? If there are travels in your forecast, then you should check out Faircast.com, a smart travel search site launched in 2006. Faircast has been recognized as a top travel site by Travel and Leisure, Time Magazine, and Business Week Online, to name a few. With every search, the site offers a fair prediction, which displays pricing history, suggestions regarding the best time to buy, and even their confidence level in the predictions. Faircast also offers a similar service for hotels called the Hotel Rate Key to help you determine how much of a deal you're getting when reserving a room. So if you want to, the biggest bang for your travel buck, head over to Faircast.com for the best time to buy. Hi, I'm Mike Hondros. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've been a union carpenter for 42 years. I just retired and uh, I have an RV and I saw Kathleen's request for help on an RV website and I responded and we're down here for about a month on our way down south for the, the winter. It's my wife, my son and myself and we're uh, only too happy to help out. These, are, these people need the help, they really do. It's, it's amazing the amount of destruction that's still here and the people that are still not taken care of. I mean, it's people that, want, that need the help, not people that are just sitting around begging for something. It's people that need help. They can't do it themselves. Not that they won't, they can't. So that's what I, that's what I see here. It's the working poor and the people who aren't able to do for themselves, who don't have insurance, and the government's forgotten about it. And that's pretty much my story. To see volunteer stories, go to www.projectkatrinavolunteers.net. Traveltelevision.org periodically presents stories from other community television programs that are of interest to our audience. We are pleased to introduce a segment from In Montgomery featuring a recent interview with David Eisner, Chief Executive of the Corporation for National and Community Service, a federal agency that oversees the multiple service and volunteer programs, including VISTA, Senior Corps, Learn and Serve, American, and AmeriCorps. These programs have been the focus of prior segments on travel television. Over 75,000 young people between the ages of 18 and 25 work for six-month installments around the United States. Since the hurricanes of 2005, many of these efforts have been directed at the Gulf Coast. Let's join the discussion for more information and insight into these programs. Volunteer.gov is a great place to go. You can go there, you can put in your zip code, you can get access to all of uh, Montgomery County Volunteer Centers opportunities or wherever you are in Montgomery County or Maryland or the country you can find an opportunity to serve and you can also find specific opportunities if you want to go down and help folks out uh, and could 
that are still recovering from Katrina. I want to take you on the road because that's my next segue. Perfect here, I'll tell you. <laughs> Let's talk about Katrina. I mean, there is something, where are we with that and do we still need volunteers? And if so, what kind of special skills are you looking at? It is one of the most amazing stories uh, I've ever seen. We have 1.1 million Americans that have gone down into uh, Louisiana and Mississippi to help people rebuild their lives. We've never seen uh, any kind of volunteer mobilization like that before in, in America's history. Um, and what's really interesting is that we saw a little bit more, a little bit more volunteering in, two, in the second year than in the first year. Um, so we're, we didn't see the kind of drop-off that you might have expected after the, after the first year. Um, and now we're seeing that we still need skilled volunteers. Yeah. We still need, uh, there's still a lot of groups that are going down. Colleges and universities are finding really strong opportunities. A lot of corporations are sending down uh, their employee teams. Um, it's going to take a decade. Um, but with the work that the folks on the ground are doing, uh, supported by the volunteers, uh, what's been happening down there is really miraculous. Let's, uh, can we bring up the pictures? I think we got a bunch of pictures too, and I think this kind of shows exactly what some of the volunteering issues are. David. We've got, um, people were cleaning debris for a long time, um, all of our AmeriCorps members, um, but also taking care of uh, kids in some of the, in some of the shelters. Um, there you see some of our senior corps volunteers uh, working with some of their, uh, ha and uh, there you've got a bunch of folks helping build houses. I think President Bush was in that picture as well. Um, the amazing thing is seeing the adults and the kids working together and you begin to get a sense of what it means when one person's willing to volunteer and put their life out on the line in a way that helps another person um, uh, get their life on track. It's it's something that um, is hard to articulate. I'm sure, Ann, you've seen this uh, over and over again, but volunteers will always tell you, and we found this particularly around Katrina, that they got back much more uh, than they ever gave. You know what I like about that picture is the generational difference. Yeah. I mean, that's a perfect example, Ann, of seniors volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, over and over again, we see that um, we sometimes miss how important it is to tap the experience and the um, power of our older Americans. Well, they can walk into schools and command respect, um, although, of course, if you look there, you see there's nothing quite like the brawn of those <laughs> 18 to 24-year-old <laughs> kids when they're putting things, uh, doing things. But, but really, the, the importance and the vitality of volunteering is about how people can make just an incredible difference in the life of somebody else. And um, you know, the, here you see the kinds of camps that they set up in cities across Mississippi and, and Louisiana. Um, and you see that um, those folks would, there are many houses that would not be rebuilt. There were many people that would not have been able to come back. Hey, who's having more fun there, the volunteer or the kid? <laughs> you know, uh, like I say, the volunteers always end up saying, um, that they have a better experience and uh, get more out of it than the people that they helped. Um, and uh, there sometimes, it, sometimes you look at these pictures, it's hard to tell who's getting helped and who's doing the helping. Um, Katrina, outside Katrina, I guess volunteering in general, and I'm, I'm first David and Ann, on the national level, then a local level, is it just nice or necessary? It's so important. You know, more and more we're seeing um, millions of kids whose parents are in prison. We have 700,000 prisoners coming back into our front doorsteps every year with no place to work, no place to live, and no connections to the community. 13 million kids living in poverty. And for all of these challenges that we face, we have no better intervention than when an American citizen says, I'm going to actually stand up and help you. That's how you can change a life. That's how you can make someone um, someone succeed that hasn't been able to succeed. Change the road. It, yeah. it literally changes the path that they go on. And so when you're solving high school dropouts and you're solving violence and you're solving inner city gangs and you're cl helping uh, prevent disasters and you're cleaning up after emergencies, that's not nice stuff to do. That's absolutely necessary. Local level. 
Absolutely necessary. We're working with over 700 nonprofit agencies who are working with many of the clients that that David's has been talking about. Um, they're making huge differences in emergency preparedness. You know, the fact that the volunteers are recognized as essential during an emergency. Um, volunteering is nice, but it is absolutely necessary. What what kind of commitment are you talking about? Well, for AmeriCorps, full time commitment. We're talking about 17 hundred hours of service over the course of a year in uh, state and national or it could be in volunteer, Volunteers in Service to America which is our anti-poverty Ameri AmeriCorps program or it could be NCCC, the National uh, Community Conservation Corps which is our team-based residential program. Um, but th that's a very intense um, service and in exchange we provide a little less than $5,000 in scholarship toward continuing education or to pay back a student loan. Um, and we also provide uh, a little bit of a stipend. I have to be careful here because the members themselves have told me that uh, it's nothing, not <laughs> nothing to brag about, but it it's can, it can it take helps. care of uh, f food and rent if you're, if you're really careful. But the point is, if you volunteer, you not only get the good feeling of helping, but you've also got some kind of remuneration coming back. That's right. If you're part of AmeriCorps, um, you're able to do that. And we see AmeriCorps as helping build a larger infrastructure. There's a lot of AmeriCorps members that actually recruit and train and supervise um, the millions of other Americans that serve in our country. How much room do y'all have? It may be a strange looking sleigh, this animal. but this United Methodist Youth Group bus is packed full of Christmas cheer, headed for a place that sure could use some. We're just getting everything together and about to get ready to head over there. Over there is not far, but since Hurricane Katrina came, it's a whole different world. And just the devastation was unbelievable. I just, you know, I didn't expect to be this bad. More than 50 United Methodist youth from in and around Mississippi set up a Christmas shopping center of sorts in one of the hardest hit areas. Some books. To hand out 10 truckloads of donated toys, books, and basics to those who've lost everything. And we had nine feet of water in our house. So nobody has nothing. I really, really appreciate them doing all this for me. Truly a blessing. It really is. They've thought this through right down to the details. I got some wrapping paper for the people in the campers to wrap their Christmas presents that were given out today. The teens trek through FEMA trailer parks with bins of the little things hurricane victims need for Christmas. It's got Christmas decorations. But probably don't have. And we just wanted to give you a little bit of Christmas stuff so you, it'll help you get ready for Christmas. Thank you. Wrapping paper and all kind of things and a great. It makes you feel like Christmas. It's a place where joy may be hard to find this Christmas. But on this day, it came by the busload. Y'all been a God's blessing. Complete with a bow. Okay, thank you. Merry Christmas. 